Always be open to looking for opportunities, okay? A few years ago, back in 87, we're in St. Moritz, Switzerland. And I do the singles luge, but there's also a doubles luge, okay? Doubles is two guys on a the sled, they're each doing half of the driving, but only the top guy can see, all right? The top guy's giving the bottom guy shoulder signals to tell him when to drive. <laughs> yeah, plus you gotta have, you, you got a higher uh, center of gravity so it's easier to flip. I mean, that's a crazy sport. And I've never done the doubles, but we go to St. Moritz and we notice right away that, hey, there's nobody signed up for the doubles race. There's actually three, three teams, the, the, just three teams. So I figured, man, it, I gotta find a double sled and find me a partner because, hey, if somebody crashes, we got a medal, right? <laughs> So, so I go to my, my buddy Pablo Garcia from Spain, and I told him, you know, hey, we got to sign up. He goes, hey, you know, Pablo's no dummy, he saw the opportunity, he says, yeah, let's do it. Well, we had to get permission from Coach. So we asked Coach, and Coach goes, look, if you guys can find a double sled in this town, you got my blessings. Well, it turns out that St. Moritz, even though they've got the luge track, they're a bobsled town. They don't like losers over there. They're only like one luge guy in all of Switzerland. They like bobsled. And so we spent three days cold calling in German. We don't speak German, but that's what they speak over there. We learned a little phrase. Haven't seen a double sitzer schlitten for the World Cup Ren. Slam, right? Do you have a double sled for the World Cup race? <laughs> Next door. Three days of cold calling. And finally we found a guy that had an old double sled, rusted out, 20-year-old sled in his backyard. He lent it to us. We got it race ready. We joined the race. Everybody lined up to watch Ruben and Pablo kill themselves. <laughs> We almost did. I mean, we came close to crashing several times down that track, and we finished. We got fourth place, right? <laughs> I know, fourth place. We, yeah, they, yeah I, thought, I thought it was pretty great. But well, anyways, we go to the we, we, <laughs> we go to the closing ceremonies, right? The the medal ceremonies, and you know they got the podium first, second, third, and we just love seeing it. You know, watching those guys get their medals is just exciting. So we're sitting, sitting there watching, and the and the race organizers they they point to us. It goes, hey, you two, us. Yeah, so we walk right in front of the first place, right? Right on the ground. And they gave us fourth place medals. Can you believe that? I've been in the sport for 20 years. I've never seen a fourth place medal in my life. I actually tried, I, I checked it out. It wasn't chocolate or anything, right? It was real. <laughs> we got our pictures in the paper. And, at the, and we earned so many World Cup points for that fourth place finish that at the end of the whole season, we were ranked 14th in the world in the doubles. <laughs> Next week, we're, uh, we're at another track, and the word had spread like wildfire, what, what Pablo and I had done. He said, you guys were lucky. We said, no, we weren't lucky. We saw an opportunity, and we went for it. And that got them real quiet. Right? And they understood that, wow, these guys, you know, they, they went for it. So go for it. There's two types of people in the world. They're either on your team, or they're not on your team. They're either on your dream team, or they're not. And the faster you can figure out which team they're on, the better it is for you. So I started testing people, right? I would tell them a little bit about my dream and see how they reacted, right? And so I'd say, hey, I'm taking up the sport of losers. I'm being the Olympics in four years. Oh, they laughed. They rolled their eyes. They just, yeah, you, right. They did that. I knew they, they probably weren't on my team. On the other hand, they said, wow, luge, Olympics, tell me more. How can I help? Wow, if I found somebody like that, that's like a gold person, right? And I held on to them like they're made out of gold. And by doing that over and over and over and over again, I could have filled this, this whole arena with people that were on my team. See, they were my supporters. And it got to the point where it didn't matter if I crashed four out of five times uh, on the sled, it was going to be easier to get back on that sled one more time than come back to Houston and tell everybody I quit. Because by then it was our dream. I just happened to be a guy on the sled. This huge conversion van, he... He, he drives it right in front of my, my, my house, opens up the window, starts yelling like a madman. I believe in you, baby. I'm going to see you on TV. You know why? Because you will be a three-time Olympian. Arr! He oh, peels off and there's smoke all over the place. He's like, Whoa, man, I'm on my lawn like I'm five minutes flat, right? And sometimes I go across the street and mow his lawn, too. <laughs> now, maybe that's why he did it. I don't know. <laughs> but I'll go across the street and I, and I tell him, hey, Tom, I'm, I'm, I was chosen. I'm one of the selected ones. You know, I'm going, I'm carrying the torch, Kansas City, in just, just about a month. And Tom knew I was broke. He knew I was so broke. Because so everybody always asks me, you know, what, what's, who's your sponsor, Ruben? Coke? Pepsi? You know, Microsoft? I mean, who's your, Nike? <laughs> right. My, my sponsors? Visa and MasterCard. My own. <laughs> right? <laughs> so he knew I was totally broke. And when I told him I'm going to Kansas City, he points to the big van and he goes, I'm driving you, buddy. Road trip. 
He drove me 12 hours each way. My quarter mile in 10 minutes flat. <laughs> I look like a little old man. That's great. I got so, it, it took me so long, my arm got tired, I had to switch hands. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want the papers next day to say, Olympics canceled, Ruben dropped the torch. <laughs> right? You get to the end, you light the next person's torch, a little high five, they turn around, and they take off. And I just sat there for about five minutes, watching that torch until it disappeared. And next time I saw that flame, there I was at the opening ceremonies of the Salt Lake City Olympics, right? As a three-time Olympian. And I'm watching all my heroes bring it in, right? It's Dorothy Hamill, Peekaboo Street, and, and all, just all my heroes, Dan Jansen, and they're bringing it on. And then just a few yards in front of me, they pass it to, wouldn't you know it, Scott Hamilton. Yeah. God, little skater that, that inspired me to go after my dream 20 years earlier. I mean, man. I don't know what you're feeling right now, but I feel just like I felt that day. Proudest day of my life. <laughs> Guys, if you have a dream and you're willing to go for it, you refuse to quit, and you hang on to your leadership, you can make that dream come true. Thank you so much. <laughs>